brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So notice he says, be not conformed, but be transformed. Or the word transformed there literally means changed. And notice how this takes place. By the renewing of your mind. Now let's turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll come back to Romans 12 momentarily. But I want you to keep that scripture in your thoughts. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed. How many know God wants you to change? He wants you to change. He wants you to change. And we know that this change takes place by the renewing of our minds. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 4, he says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So notice now he says we have weapons that are mighty through God for the purpose of pulling down or overthrowing strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we see from this verse of scripture that there is mental warfare taking place in the minds of human beings on planet earth. There is a real battle waging in the realm of the spirit, competing for your soul, which literally means for your emotions, for your will. How many know that, that wherever the mind goes, the man follows? So the enemy is attacking our minds because he knows the mind is the battleground. He knows the mind is the bullseye. It is the place where Satan aims. It is the place where he targets his attacks. Because he knows that if he can captivate your thoughts, if he can develop strongholds in your mind, then he can in essence control your life. Because a man or a woman is the product of their thoughts. You are what you think. I said, you are what you think. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 declares, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You cannot separate who you are from what you think. So if you're going to change who you are, if you're going to change what you have, if you're going to change what you're doing, you've got to first of all change how you think. Because how you think produces behavior. How you think produces behavior. Now let's go back to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans chapter 12. So I've got to change my thoughts if I'm going to change my life. See, people who attempt to change their behavior without changing their thoughts will never experience permanent change. See, you may see temporary change, but you'll never see permanent change until you change how you think. Because how you think is what's producing how you behave. Jesus said over in Mark chapter 7, he said, It is not the things that come outside of a man that defiles him, but it's the things that comes out of the man that defiles him. And the first thing that comes out of a man is evil thoughts. And he goes to show us that evil thoughts are the products of of all type of negative behavior so if I'm going to change my behavior I've got to change my thoughts see most people look at their lives and they don't like their life they don't like what they're doing they don't like what they're experiencing they don't like what they have but yet they try to change what they see by changing something external they think if I just change this relationship get a new man then life will be happier. But what you discover is you get a new man and you're still unhappy because it's not the man that you was with necessarily, it's you because if you can change your thoughts, then you can change your outcome. 
Well, let me get a new job because, you know, I just need to change my environment. Well, you can change your environment, but if you don't change from the inside out, then no matter what environment you're in, the environment won't have much impact on your life because the change doesn't need to come from the outside. The change needs to come from the inside. So I've got to change what I think about. I've got to change what's going on on the inside of me. Because it is what's happening inside of me that's affecting what's happening outside of me. Are you listening to me? All right, Romans the 12th chapter. Notice what he said in verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the transformation in my life, the transformation in your life takes place by what the scripture declares or refers to as the renewing of the mind. The replenishing of the mind. Learning how to think a new way. And then notice what he says what, when your mind is transformed, when your mind is changed. Notice what he says. Then you will prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So when my mind is renewed, I will begin to live out the will of God for my life. Why is it that so many believers are not living out God's will? Because they're not renewing their mind. See, it's God's will for you to be healed. It's God's will for you to prosper. It's God's will for you to enjoy peace. It's God's will for you to have harmony in your marriage and in your relationships. But why is it that we don't have these things? Because we're not renewing our mind. Because we're not thinking in line with the word. Are you listening to me? So if you're going to change your life, you've got to change your thoughts. You've got to change your thoughts. Now turn over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians chapter 4. Now notice this, and this is very important. You are responsible for your thoughts. See, you can't blame anybody else for how you think. I said, you can't blame anybody else for how you think. You are responsible for how you think. If you think negative, you will have a negative life. If you think poverty, you will have a life filled with poverty. How you think is going to affect how you live. If you look at your life today, somebody said, I don't like my life. I don't like what I have. I don't like the fruit that I see in my life. I don't like my relationships. I don't like my finances. I don't like nothing that's going on in my life. Well, let me, let me suggest to you, change how you think. See, happiness is an inside job. And this is why the Bible admonishes us to guard your heart for out of the heart... Proverbs 4.23 flows the issues of life. So every issue in life comes out of my spirit. Comes from the inside out. Not from the outside in. Your circumstance has nothing to do with your happiness. This is good teaching. I said your circumstance has nothing to do with your happiness. Because when a man is thinking in line with the word, circumstances can be going awry. I mean, there could be crazy things happening in his life, but yet he can have joy unspeakable and full of glory because he knows that joy is not the product of what's going on around him. Joy is the product of what he knows on the inside. And this is why James says, count it all joy, knowing this. This is why the enemy wants to rob you of knowledge. Because he knows that what you know affects how you live. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. See, you think the only way you can be happy is when things around you are going good. You think the only way that you can have peace is when everything around you is serene and calm. No, my brothers and sisters, right in the midst of storms you can sleep. When your mind has been renewed, re-innovated, refilled, glory to God. 
Today, God wants you to partner with his word so that your mind can be changed. Look at Ephesians 4. 